call the uh, regular January 2014 meeting of the Board of Trustees to order and ask everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. I'd now like to ask Peggy to call the roll. Trustee Cash. Here. Trustee Greidenthal. Here. Trustee Daniels. Here. Trustee Flunder. Here. <laughs> Trustee Maddox. Here. Trustee Rios. Here. And Trustee Townsend. Present. Thank you. Um, we now need to uh, approve or the amendment to the agenda. Move I don't know that you have an <coughs> amendment to the agenda. Move approval of the agenda as amended. Second. Well, okay. What's the amendment? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I would like to add an amendment to the agenda. Mr. Chairman, I, I would request that uh, you add an executive session to discuss matters which would be deemed privileged within the attorney client relationship. Did you already have that? Uh, it would be 10 minutes. Uh, no more, and it could be either at uh, 12 or whenever you prefer, Mr. Chairman. Um, how about we do that right after the president's <coughs> report at item number seven? Yes, Mr. Chairman. That'd be fine? Yeah. All right, those who made the uh, <coughs> motion in the second, is that a yes. friendly Se amendment to the amendment? Yes. Second. <laughs> All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the motion carries. <coughs> item, agenda item number four, uh, approval of the minutes of the December 17th, 2013 Board of Trustee meeting. So, so move. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Do we have a uh, comment, question, something to bring to our attention, Wendell? No. No? All right. Hearing no, no others, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good, thank you. Audience to patrons and petitioners, is there anyone present this afternoon that would wish to address the Board of Trustees? All right, seeing none, then we will move to item number six, communication. <coughs> Dr. Gibbons. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have two communications. We received a request from the Kansas City, Kansas, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. 2014 Holiday Celebration Committee seeking support from KCKCC as a major monetary sponsor to underwrite the cost of educational scholarships given to Wyandotte County students. However, the college, in keeping with the KCKCC Strategic Plan Goal 3, Change, Shape, Institutional Image and Awareness, in lieu of a cash contribution to support the event, the college will award two scholarships to graduating seniors for 60 credit hours of college coursework at KCKCC. And the second, we also received a note from Mike King, the Secretary of Transportation in the state of Kansas who attended the holiday celebration hosted by the KCK Chamber of Commerce, where our a cappella vocal ensemble provided the music for the event directed by Professor John Stafford. He wrote, and I quote, I really enjoyed your group at the KCK Chamber event. You brought energy and life to the meeting. Thanks also for de developing young careers. Have a Merry Christmas and an exceptional new year. Mike King. That's all of ours. All right, all the communication. Anything else? All right, very good. Thank you, Dr. Gibbons. And now what brings us to agenda item number seven, the president's report. Um, I have a few events that are coming up. We know that Martin Luther King uh, birthday celebrations will be going on all over the county. Um, Beginning on Sunday, January 20th, 20th, 
here in the upper jewel, um, there, the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated Upsilon Rho Omega Chapter and the Kansas City, Kansas Community College will have a Sunday supper to celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Day. And that will be this Sunday, the 20th, here in Upper Jewel. Excuse me, I believe the day Sunday will be the 19th. Yes. Is it the 19th? Yeah. Oh, they put the wrong day. Yes. Okay. So you may want to. Sunday the 20th. Just be sure. 19th. Sunday the 19th. Okay. Yeah. Monday is the 20th. Okay. All right. Just be sure nobody I'll be sure misses. Change that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. On the, it'll be Sunday uh, here in Upper Jewel. The keynote speaker will be Mr. Sam West, the owner of Chick fil A, located at the plaza at the Speedway. The panel members, Reverend Mark Holland, Mayor, CEO of the Unified Government of Wyandotte County, Dr. Brenda Kelly, uh, our own Director of Developmental Education here at KCKCC. Reverend C.L. Backus, pastor of the Mount Zion Baptist Church, Mr. Chester Owens, community leader, and Dr. Evelyn Hudson, president of the Kansas City, Kansas School Board. The panel moderator will be Dr. Doris Givens, president of the Kansas City, Kansas Community College. I don't know her. No, no. Mm -mm. Okay, the Kansas City, Kansas, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday celebration will be held on Monday, January 20th. And that will be down at the Reardon Center. Donuts with Don and Doris will be on Thursday, January 23rd at 7.30 in the Human Resources Conference Room. Board Effect Training is on Thursday, January 23rd. And if you all are worried about this, I made copies for all of you so that you can have your own copy and you won't have to try to remember this. Thank is you. Is that good? Okay. Here you go. And you can send them that way too, Peggy. Um, we also have a budget audit meeting on Thursday, January 30th at 3.30 in the boardroom. That's for the Board of Trustees. And we'll also have a Board of Trustees poly policy handbook meeting. And that's scheduled for Tuesday, February 4th at 3.30 in room 3325. Paul Robeson. The play will be performed by Stogie Kenyatta here on Tuesday, February the 4th at 11 a.m. to 12.15 and Thursday, February the 6th from 9.30 to 10.45. Dean Marks will have more information when she gives her report. The 22nd Annual Black History Banquet will be Saturday, February the 8th at the Jack Reardon Convention Center. Uh, festivities begin at 5.30. Dr. Mildred Edwards, she's a former K Board region, will be the guest speaker. And for board members, if you have not already given your name to Peggy, if you plan to attend, please do so. The legislature is back in session. We will closely monitor and report on bills that specifically affect KCKCC. On Thursday, February 13th, Phi Theta Kappa will be in Topeka. Um, statewide, Phi Theta Kappa will be honored at an annual luncheon. Two KC, KCC students will travel to Topeka with their um, director, Stacy Tucker, and they will join me and we will visit our individual, we will visit, visit the offices of individual legislators in Topeka while we are there that day. Thank you. All right, comments or questions? And Wendell is recognized first. Dr. Givens, the, uh, the Sunday supper, is it necessary to make reservations for that if you plan to attend? Or just show I will check, out, check that out and make sure. Would okay. you like to attend? Yes. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Other board members with questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, I'll uh, be pleased to accept a motion. Uh, move to uh, executive session, uh, not to exceed 10 minutes for attorney-client privilege. For the purpose already stated, okay, mm -hmm. I have a motion. Second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we will stand adjourned for about 10 minutes. All right, we'll call us back into uh
regular session um, and we did not get a motion or a second or take action on accepting the president's report which was really the motion I was asking for before the executive <laughs> session motion so um, move acceptance of the president's report second. all right I have a motion and a second uh, all in favor aye. aye any opposed okay very good uh, we will move to agenda item then number eight uh, and hear from the Dean of Human Resources uh, Ms. Leona Marks hello good afternoon good afternoon, good afternoon. Uh, you have my written report you've received the report I just want to emphasize uh, that uh, I did do a presentation at the spring end service for the faculty and staff uh, an overview of the uh, patient protection and affordable care act uh, mainly uh, just to over give an overview of the law and to uh, let the employees know that the college has complied with what we were to do under the law which was to notify the employees regarding the marketplaces being available and also that the college is reporting their health insurance on their W-2 forms and we started doing that last year. Um, also I want to draw your attention to uh, some very uh, good programs that are coming up in the Intercultural Center in February on the 1st the Nartan dancers uh, which are excellent beautiful dancers from uh, India and that will be held at the Performing Arts Center there will be a reception at 5.30, performance at 6.30, and they are selling uh, advanced sales for $5. <clears throat> February 4th and 6th would be the Paul Robeson Run Man Show uh, play, and uh, you uh, receive the flyer uh, like this, uh, looks like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I have uh, seen this production and it is just excellent. I really strongly recommend that you attend. Uh, Mr. Kenyatta does a wonderful uh, one-man show act on the life of Paul Robeson and all of his contributions. He was an outstanding citizen um, who had a, a very interesting life, so please come. Um, also, uh, uh, BizFest uh, will begin February 5th through 8th. Uh, the college is always involved with that in working with uh, students uh, to uh, assist them and showing them how to start their own businesses and we also award scholarships to BizFest uh, participants, graduates. And uh, then also just wanted to make you aware that the My Shelf to Yours program has awarded scholarships, five $500 scholarships and one $250 scholarship a $500 scholarship on behalf of the Waiko Ethnic Festival and 24 book scholarships. Wow. And that ends my report. Excellent. Just hit, just hit. Any questions or comments on, for Dean Marks? Move approval of her report. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the report. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Leota. Okay. Next comes the Vice President for Academic Affairs and we'll hear from Dr. Vitale. Okay, you have my report in front of you. I'd be happy to answer any questions if anyone has any. I think next. Uh, We're scrolling. The, okay. <laughs> at the uh, February board member meeting, we're going to try to present the uh, some of the developmental ed findings of their uh, survey that they did with the fall students they should have all that data compiled so okay. we can present that there and, and go over some of the in details some of the information in that report okay. uh, I know that they had been asked of uh, I think at the December meeting for some elaboration on some of those things so like I know it's on the there was a inspection of the rigging at the Performing Arts Center, is there a problem with that or is that just a periodic inspection that we're doing? Is there are some issues with the There's a periodic one, but there are some issues with the rigging. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and are there safety issues or? We're waiting for the reply from the, okay. from the riggers. Okay. We do not think so. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Maybe I'll, uh, would it I be appropriate, uh, <coughs> Vice President, uh, with the uh, along with the developmental um, program update, um, our transition for Accuplacer to Compass, knowing what how that is. Uh, uh, it, uh, it, it, are we seeing an effect, I guess, uh, uh, particularly with the high school uh, students? Um, you know, better, lower pass rate or what have you. Would that be something that we could have? Yeah, we can, look at, we can take a look at that and see what we've got, what data we have. Okay, I appreciate that. And I just noticed again that under that developmental education, they mentioned again the fall 2013 student needs assessment. Right, that's what we'll elaborate on through that data. Month. Yes. Thank you. Oh, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. That'll be next month? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Any other uh, Move questions? Move approval of the Vice President's report. Second. All right. I have a motion and a second to approve. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Well, motion carries. <coughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Metallic. Uh, and I believe that um, Vice President Bodie. Yep. Vice President Bodie is up next on okay. the agenda. Uh, you have my report with, uh, included in your packet. begins on page 18. I think there's a couple of things I'd like to highlight to start with. Perhaps first off, um, Dr. Jonathan Long. Um, has joined us. Um, Jonathan is the new Dean of Student Services. He joined us last Monday, um, hit the ground rolling. Uh, Jonathan comes to us from Central Missouri, Central Missouri University. Um, and we're glad to have him and I wanted to make sure that you um, knew who John was and welcome him to KCKCC. Welcome. Hello, John. Welcome. Wonderful. The other point of that still deals in the student services area and in the advising area and in, in coordination with Dr. McDowell and enrollment management. During the open enrollment last week um, to support uh, the strategic plan of invasive um, advising, intrusive, intrusive. advising, um, one of the things that we have looked at is how do we get more students to go to a um, free college um, orientation so that they know what they're what they're walking into and for the first time during open enrollment last week we captured students coming out of compass training compass testing and sent them to their first college orientation on their way to go get in their classes and some escaped us I won't um, tell you that but we had about 80 students who went through 80 brand new students who just came in that day to figure out that they wanted to start their higher education experience that made it through a college orientation that day. And so I was very happy that Denise's people um, who helped set up that enrollment and um, our advising center got together and made that happen. And so, and the strategic planning committee who is working on that item had played a big part in that also. So I thought that would be some good news for you all. Congratulations on that. I think the orientation piece has been something that we've all been somewhat concerned about. And so thanks for getting more students in on that. I think it's an important thing. And then finally, Bella Cuisine um, opened this past Monday um, doing business at Vic and David's um, Blue Devil Deli. Um, they are Vic and David's Pizzeria off 80th and Leavenworth Road. Um, and Susie used to, uh, she was a student here and they're a long time family in Kansas City, Kansas. And so we're happy to have them. It's a, it's a soft opening. There's menus are on pieces of paper. They're not on the wall yet. There's no pictures up to make it pretty. Um, but they're open and at least for the comments I've had, people are, are happy and satisfied with the new operator of the deli. Right. It was a nice ar article about the new deli and today's uh, Kansas City, Kansas. And, you know, no print of that. You have to go on the web and look at it. But it was a nice article with a picture about the New Delhi. Kelly Rogie wrote that. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and 
and I'll answer your questions if you have any questions about my report. Trustee Maddox. Yes, uh, Vice President Bodie. Under uh, Linda Wyatt's report, uh, she's, uh, she's talking about uh, working with the marketing coordinator, develop an internship, uh, internal internship program. Now, is that that? Uh, am I to take that as it is an internal uh, in internship program? These students won't be placed throughout the city. It'll just be on the campus. The marketing coordinator she's talking there is an academic coordinator, and Marvin, you might have to help me on who who is the coordinator of the marketing um, um, department. Karen Gaines. Karen Gaines. Um, and so Linda's working with her to see how we can place our marketing students. I suspect what they're looking at is as we try to put that marketing and the um, the refacing of the of the college RFP out is there an opportunity for our marketing students to see how we market our college oh, but okay. um, <clears throat> if in fact they get a marketing job at someone else I'm sure they're not going to turn down a paid internship at a marketing corporation but that is her working with the academic coordinator to see if those students can find uh, internships okay. thank you Anyone else questions? For I move approval of the report. Second. All right. I have a motion to approve the report and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. We'll move on now. Um, on page 28 of, uh, of your um, packet begins the audit. I'd like to introduce, um, not that I have to introduce him, you all know, Bill Miller um, from Novak Burks. Um, Bill has made this presentation to the Finance Committee. Um, what you're having presented to you today is the final draft of the 2013 um, budget, excuse me, audit. And if in fact you approve it at the end, we will be asking for approval to, to make this the, the approved final budget, uh, audit. Thank you. Bill? Thank you, Brian. Again, I'm Bill Miller with Novak Burks, PC. I reside at 4717 North 130th Street, Kansas City, Kansas, and we have offices at 77th and Parallel and 4600 Madison in Kansas City, Missouri. It's an honor to be here today to present the report uh, that we uh, presented last year, and I, I want to highlight a few critical key areas. I believe everybody received it in their packet in advance, and again, we did present it to the Audit Committee or the Finance Committee last Thursday evening uh, in detail and answered some questions. A few things that we really kind of, uh, I'm not going to go over our firm, I think you're somewhat familiar with us, but I did want to kind of review kind of the fundamentals of our audit and our audit process that we go through each year. And the first we, we ask are the basic financial statements materially correct? Secondly, are the internal controls and financial reporting controls operating effectively? And last, did the college comply in all material respects with finance-related laws and regulations? And we can answer in the affirmative on all of those items, and that's really a positive thing for the college. Uh, I'm going to kind of bounce around a little bit here today, only because I, I feel like we want to kind of talk about the qualitative aspects of our engagement. But I just want to make a note that during our audit, we did not encounter any difficulty in dealing with staff or, or employees here at the college, and I think that's always important to communicate to the board. Um, we, di we, we are not aware of any uncorrected uh, items. In other words, during the course of our audit, if we find items that we think require review and perhaps a journal entry, those journal entries have been made. We got full cooperation from Dr. Givens, uh, Mr. Bodie. Doug Welch in particular, uh, Marie in the accounting office. Um, we did not have any disagreements with management as it relates to the financial statements as they're reported today. And um, so we feel pretty good about the, the qualitative aspects of the audit. And I, and I wanted to take a moment to just kind of go back through those. Um, we did conduct our audit under uh, generally accepted auditing standards. Because of the amount of funds that the college receives, 
uh, in terms of federal funding, this is an audit that was compliant with OMBA 133 as well. So governmental auditing standards also apply. And then there are certain aspects of it, particularly in the supplemental schedules that deal with the Kansas Municipal Audit Guide. So I think we, we conducted our engagement within those three reporting cycles and those reporting uh, mechanisms um, for this year. And I feel fine about all of those aspects. As I go through, if you have questions, please stop me. I'll be happy to answer them. I think this is kind of, uh, you know, the big changes that we talk about from year to year. Uh, there's three of them. <clears throat> and I'm going to go over those before we kind of go through the report, just so that you can keep those in mind as we go through. The first one is property tax is a big revenue stream for the college. Uh, in working with staff, there was some additional diligence in terms of working through what is the receivable and how that should be booked. So you're going to see a little bit of an estimate in property tax receivable in this year's report. There was also last year an extension of the early retirement payable uh, from 13 to, I believe, sometime in 15. And so that required a change in that estimate as you go, as we, as we went through the engagement. And then the last one is the reporting as it relates to the endowment association. In the prior year, the endowment association's financial statements were on a, on a modified cash basis. They were conducted by other auditors, not by our firm. Uh, for the year ending June 30th of 2013, they engaged our firm. Uh, we took the engagement contingent on performing GAAP-based financial statements, so they were compliant with GAAP. That's the reason you'll only see one year's financial statements out there for the endowment association and that's simply because there's a change in the accounting basis from year over year okay again kind of wrapping up the audit part and then I want to talk a little bit about the actual audit report uh, the re audit opinion on today's draft is is an unqualified opinion so that's the best opinion you can get from an audit standpoint we had no material weakness in internal control which is similar to last year and we had no significant deficiency in internal control, which is different than last year. So this year we have no significant deficiency, and I want to be uh, honest with you, that's because most of the critical schedules and underlying documentation was performed by staff, uh, and so that, that's very good. I congratulate you for that, okay? Um, and I think, lastly, I'm going to go to the report that you have in your packet. Um, and I, I'm just going to, we, we took some time uh, in the early part of 13, I can't recall what month, but I want to say it was the first quarter of last year. And we spent an afternoon kind of talking about the financial statements and, and what the financial statements mean to the college. And essentially, the first section of the financial statements is management discussion and analysis. And, and you'll see those on the report that you have both on your electronic devices, but I laid a draft up there for everybody. But the MDNA is on pages three, th three through seven. And I would encourage all of you to take a moment and read those, or if you haven't, and uh, kind of at least have a discussion about <coughs> in your own mind if you have questions. Those were prepared by uh, uh, Brian and Doug and, and staff. Um, but I think they give a good kind of layman's terms of how the, the college is doing in critical areas. Bill, can you hang on Brian, what page are those? 35 on, on board effect. 35. I'm sorry. They, they begin on page 35. 35 to 38. Okay. It's just after the audit opinion, which I've essentially just covered. It, it essentially has an introduction, and, and then it talks about the financial statements and, and kind of major trends as it goes through the year for the college. And there is a final section which talks about the economic outlook uh, for the college and kind of the trends that it faces and and then uh, those those are really prepared by management we don't necessarily audit those we tie them back to the financial statements to gain comfort with those numbers but those are really comments that were developed by staff um, you'll note and I'm not sure what page it is in your electronic document but I'm I'd like to spend a moment to talk about the statement of net position at the um, audit committee, the finance committee, which was conducted on Thursday, we spent a fair amount of time talking about this document because when you look at the total assets of the college, it looks pretty comparative year over year. But in reality, you really need to dig a little bit deeper because you'll notice substantial 
uh, changes in current assets and long-term assets. Bill, which page is that on your report? On my report, it's page, page eight. eight. Page I'm not eight. sure what it is electronically. It, it, we've got it on, on numbers are all here now. Okay. Yeah. So if you look eight. at the bottom, yeah. there's 79 million in assets each year, page and that 40. seems yeah, sort of consistent. Is that page 40? Yeah. 40 electronically, page 8 on your paper copy. Yeah, you okay. Pages, numbers in the middle of the page. The See point I want to make on this, eight, this yeah. document, but this is really an important part. The yeah, assets for the college are shifting because the college has undergone an extensive uh, investment in capital infrastructure, and there were dollars loaned that created cash. That cash has been invested in these buildings and other things. And so, you know, I, I don't know the future plans in terms of building, but I, I can tell you that, that that is reflective in this document, and I would ad advise you all to take a moment and look through those numbers at your pleasure. As always, if you have questions, you're welcome to ask Brian or anybody on our staff. But, you know, when you, when you look at uh, the current assets going from 43 to 25 million, that is simply a massive investment of capital in, uh, in assets of the college. <coughs> Okay? That's offset on the next page where we took on the statement of net position and we talk about the liabilities and equity because you see the kind of the reverse occurring and that is that, you know, um, our liabilities are very consistent. We didn't issue any debt for the year end of June 30th of 2013. Subsequent to year end, a bond issuance was held. Uh, so there's really not that impacted, and again, that's where you have, you know, my current assets have fallen, but my current liabilities are not, and, and so I think you're feeling that, you're dealing with that in the present, okay? Um, and then lastly, the next page is the Statement of Financial Position for the Endowment Association. Again, I, my only comment there is there's only one year, and, there, and I think I covered the reason for that. The subsequent page on page 11, Brian, can you tell me what page that is in the electronic document? 40, 43. 43. Uh, 43 is a very powerful piece of paper. Um, it essentially shows all of the operating revenues for the period for the college com in a year-over-year -year comparative situation. I don't think any of those numbers, based on the, the budget documents that I saw and the minutes that I read for the organization but I think it's really good to get a snapshot of the, the financial performance for the year um, we did the college did experience a net increase in net assets of 1.7 million dollars however again a lot of that is in hard fixed assets as a result of the build out uh, the college is currently going through okay I'm just going to kind of go through the notes to the financial statements um, I know sitting through an audit presentation is probably on your likely, uh, least likely list of things to do today, <laughs> but I would uh, take you to, Brian, can you tell me what page 18 46. is? 18 is on the electronic version? 46. Page 46 of the electronic version. 18 is page 50. Page 50. I'm sorry, page 50. And that is the capital asset investment that you see. And so mm -hmm. this year there were $29 million in capital assets added to the general ledger of the college. Mm -hmm. um, the retirements, that's a little bit, I want to kind of clarify that construction and progress reduction is really the building's finished and it's moved on to the books of the college. So uh, the net impact of that is, and if you go to both years, you can see the capital assets at the beginning of July 11 was 28 million and we're ending at 53 million at Ju July 30th 2013 so again that that really graphically is probably the big mover within the financial statements this year okay um, I'm not really going to cover any other uh, notes to the financial statements I'll be happy to answer any questions um, I understand there's an additional meeting uh, scheduled as well that that's great. The only thing that I would kind of on a broad base that we talked about at the uh, uh, finance committee was that there are a number of GASB rules that are out there and I don't believe any of them are going to really create long-term issues for the college. Preliminary opinion. There is a GASB out there that relates to pension and it's on the radar screen. It's really a 2015 item but between now and then we need to work with staff and kind of develop a model to deal with pension accounting. 
you're not alone. Everybody in the world is, is working on it. But it's an issue that uh, we need to learn more about how it's going to impact the college. When you say 2015 year, Bill, are you speaking calendar or? Actually, our, I believe it would, be, it would be implemented in 2016. Okay. It goes into effect okay. in, in 2015. Thanks, Thanks for clarifying that. Any other questions? Bill, is that what you were talking about, is that what's the paragraph on page 24 of your report, that what you were just talking about? Yes. Do you pronounce what's Yes, okay. that is what I'm talking about. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and, we, and I put it in there last year, and I'll be honest, particularly in the state of Kansas, because of CAPERS, there's a lot of concern over how it's going to implement, be implemented. I'm not sure it's resolved, but I can assure you it, it will impact what you do. Is that going to be a major impact of some kind, is, is it um, procedurally or financially, or what's the impact? Well, I don't, I don't, okay, so I, <coughs> we can talk about this at any time, Doctor, but I would tell you, I don't believe there's a check to be written, but there may be a liability to be recorded on your books. Okay. That's not there today. Okay. okay. But we have plenty of time to work. And we have plenty of time to work through it, and there's, uh, it's, I predict that this is going to change several times before it's implemented, but be that as it may. Uh, pension for public employees is going to go through a lot of change here and that's what I would really want to communicate to you okay move approval of the audit report as presented second all right we have a motion and a second are there additional questions or comments I, I got a question. sure Mary Ann? When, when you have the uh, on page 29 of the endowment part Okay. The, at the bottom where it says programming and fundraising and management in general, and the total expense is 419. Yes, ma'am. Was the year before the 663? Or is that? No, that's a reclassification. That, okay. That's a great question. Thank you for asking it. Well, the endowment went through some. Um, they really made an attempt to go back to original donors and confirm what was intended on scholarship donations and they did that and as an audit firm we confirmed those we we mailed out letters uh, to two or three there's two or three critical funders that are there and that resulted in the way those are treated it's still the same kind of net asset out there uh, but it it's reported and that just shows kind of the walkthrough that they went through in that recording so, so uh, that 62 is accurate for fundraising. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, then. Okay, why was the 663 is on page 10 with the, the liabilities and the net asset? So, why wouldn't that 419 be over there, too? Or well, it, 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 okay. That's, I can answer that question for you. If you'll go to page 12, that 419 is the expense. So if you'll look two pages down, that's the 419 under the total expenses. Okay. Okay. The other was the portion of net assets available okay. in different classification. But I can understand why that's a little confusing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I just before I step away I'd like to I really got a lot of uh, good assistance this year from your staff and I want to acknowledge that thank you okay we have a motion and a second are there any other questions or comments all right hearing none all in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed thank you Bill and once again uh, Brian and uh, Doug and probably Marie and your staff thank you once again for Good all job. your cooperation and getting this to report thank you thank, thank you, you. Good job. Thank you to the Jack Burks also. excellent yeah. next item under my agenda is a contract with Chevron Energy Solutions Company um, you know, we discussed this contract prior this contract is a 7.952 million dollar contract to perform a series of construction projects and, and renovation projects within the college over about the next seven months. Um, Chevron is here today to answer, uh, Brad Borgers here from Chevron, to uh, answer any questions you may have. 
Um, it's been through the legal review. Um, and so our request today is that we finalize the contract with Chevron Energy Services. Okay, I know there are uh, probably at least a couple trustees that have questions, so who would like to go first? All right, Marianne. Uh, the internship, Brad? Yes. That's not in here? It's not uh, in the contract, but we are still going to provide the internships okay. as part of that. I didn't know we were you wanted that included in the contract. We typically don't do that as part of these you programs. Don't? Well, I don't okay. know that we did, but we definitely wanted to review and be sure we had your commitment. But everything that you said on the educational part. Yeah, what we did, through the meetings that we've had, we are still going to stand behind the educational enhancements that we can bring to the college through the conversations we've had with Dr. Daniels and Mr. Rios, along with Dr. Kramer, when we had those initial meetings. And then in the meetings that you and I have had with the staff over at the Tech Center, in terms of the rotational internship programs, we still want to put that together. We haven't really moved forward on it because until we get the contract and the financing, those are cost incurred, and we've currently incurred a substantial amount of money preparing this right now, so we just want to make sure that the contract and everything gets finalized and put together. But okay, but Brad, we want to make sure that you do do Along it. with J.E. Dunn and Chevron, we'll, we stand behind in providing those internship programs I, for the college. But, okay, we need something in writing that y'all going to do it. Okay. Uh, Which you could... Potentially provide. Could we just amend? It don't have to be in it's the contract, contract, but it's got to be written down. We'll, we'll uh, whatever the trustees want, but I understand <laughs> the directions very clearly. Um, and if you like, we could amend this to indicate what you just right. said, your commitment to continue to provide the educational enhancements at both the technical center and to provide the internships, or we could do it by separate agreement, uh, Trustee Flunder. Whichever you like. My recommendation right. is you take care of this business first. We'll right. come back and do yeah. that. Yeah. I, I think this is the business See, we don't, aspect we don't have to of it. Can be a separate yeah. agreement all together. Yeah. Okay. Well, it don't even well, have to be in here, but I want it written down. Understood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, JD, I think, I think, it's, I think uh, it's important to keep the uh, what I would call the business aspect of this uh, separate from the educational aspect, and what is traditionally. Uh, done is uh, with this question and the uh, obviously the t taping of the uh, response and that our attorney will draft a letter saying you have stated what mm -hmm. you've stated and that it's a confirmation of uh, that commitment right uh, and, and what and just as an example what we did was Tuskegee University and providing internships for them we did that through what we call the memorandum of understanding so if we can come up with some document such as that Either we can an use LOU or MOU that's yep. my understanding yeah. but I sure. understand that my marching orders or to allow them to, to get it in right this, and then we'll bring something else to the trustees yes and we could probably focus on that at the same time is there gonna be another meeting to approve the final financing in March or will that be taken care of today to just kind of think of some time the final today we're going to uh, um, hopefully pass a resolution offering for sale uh, the bonds by the February meeting we should have that all finalized and so hopefully by February 18 I think it's the February meeting we will have the final final okay and so let's I'll commit to getting something back around that same time frame on the 18th on those on the okay. internship document is it the 18th thanks John Okay. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate that. Good. So I ask today that you uh, authorize Dr. Givens um, to sign the contract with um, Chevron Energy Company. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. I will presume there are no other questions or comments since you had the opportunity already, so we will vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Right. Motion carries. And before I walk away, I'd really like to thank Dr. Gibbons and Brian for their support and their staff of the program. I think with the infrastructure we're doing, I mean, just in, in a quick nutshell, with the, the roofing improvements, the windows, the, HV, the HVAC improvements, bringing in natural gas versus all electric, in addition to the controls, you're really setting the college up for the next 15 to 20 years in terms of providing an environmentally friendly facility along with enhancing the learning environment in terms of the condition space for the students. So I commend the board in moving forward with the project in terms of taking action on this tonight. So thank you. Thank well, you. we thank, thank you. you did a pretty good job, but what's your <laughs> forecast for gas? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll get that worked out. 
All right, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> On um, page 64 of your, of your um, I'm sorry, page what? 6 4. Okay. You had uh, the first table of the interest rate look and the total cost of issuance of these bond issues. At your chair today, you have an amendment to that, and it says amended at the what top, and it has a highlight to it. Um, we, we got notification over the weekend, and that half a percent interest for that first year was a little bit better than what we were going to get. It moved to six tenths of a percent of interest. Um, we needed to do some adjustments, and then John Haas and I um, worked through these. And what we've done is we've removed um, the final year of this and made it truly a 14-year financing instead of a 15-year financing. And by doing so, we've moved the total cost of this um, bond from 10.8 to 10.55 million, about $250,000, $260,000 savings over the entire time frame. Um, this bond that you're looking at, this, this information that you're looking at, is presented to us, by, to the college, by Country Club Bank and Piper Jaffrey. Um, the other option that we had, the other financing option that we had from Bank of America was a straight lease. And in each and every one, at 3.75% steady the whole time, and in each of John's analysis that he ran, um, the Piper Jeffrey, whichever order, Country Club Piper Jaffrey or Piper Jaffrey Country Club Bank, <laughs> their proposal on every scenario that we ran was better than the Bank of America for, for the community college. And so today, what we're going to do, first, you have a resolution that I provided to you that we're going to ask that be read and approved, a resolution offering for sale um, these bonds. Now, it's just the offering, and by next month, hopefully, we will have back all the information on what um, those bonds are going to be and, and, and <coughs> All of the information that we have provided to the rating services and everything will take place during the next month. But today is the offering and then next month would be the approval of the sale of those bonds. Those bonds are through Country Club and Piper Jaffrey. And so um, I wanted to show you that the, the total cost has gone down. In that resolution, on, on the second page of that resolution, it talks about not to exceed 8.35 and not to exceed a net interest cost of 3.75%. We are currently right at 3.2%, so it gives us some flexibility, about a half a percentage point, if in fact in the next 30 to 45 days, the interest rates change. So um, that's why that number says 375, and while the net interest cost today is 31979. Um, it gives us some flexibility if that's happened. In every bond issue that we've run in the past, we've always given us our about a half a percent in case something hits the fan between now and the time those um, get sold. And so today, um, on page 67, 67 is the was the resolution um, number 14. It's a resolution authorizing the offering for sale energy conservation lease purchase agreement certificates. And so I would ask that the board um, discuss and consider and approve that um, resolution and so in the selection of Piper Country Club. Move approval of resolution number 14. We need to read first. Uh, so I have to read the whole thing. Yes. I mean, it's kind of. Go for it, Brian. Can read. We have a motion and a second. Um, now we would like someone to read the resolution. Uh, I think everybody. Number 14. Pretty, resolution the authorizing the offering for sale of energy conservation <coughs> lease purchase agreement certificate to participation series 2014 of Kansas City, Kansas Community College. Wyandotte County, County, Kansas, <coughs> to finance energy conservation improvements. Whereas Kansas City, Kansas Community College, Wyandotte County, Kansas, the college hereby selects the firm of Country Club Bank, Prairie Village, Kansas, and Piper Jaffrey Company, Leewood, Kansas, jointly the purchasers, as underwriter for one or more series of certificates of participation in a lease purchase agreement of the college in order to provide funds to finance certain energy conservation improvements 
to the college campus in Kansas City, Kansas, the improvements. And whereas the college desires to authorize the purchaser to proceed with the offering for sale of said certificates of part participation and related activities and whereas one of the duties and responsibility of the college is to prepare and distribute a preliminary official statement relating to said certificates of participation and whereas the college desires to authorize the purchaser to proceed with the distribution of preliminary official statement all other preliminary action necessary to sell said certificates of participation and whereas due to the volatile nature of the municipal bond market and the desire of the college to achieve maximum benefit of timing of the sale of said certificates of participation, the governing bar body desires to authorize the chairman to confirm the sale of such certificates of participation if necessary prior to the next meeting of the governing body to adopt the necessary resolution providing for the execution of the underlying lease purchase agreement related documents. Be it resolved by the governing body of the Kansas City, Kansas Community College, Wyandotte County, Kansas, as follows. Section 1, the purchaser is hereby authorized to offer a competitive public sale approximately $8.275 million principal amount of Certificates of Participation Series 2014 evidence, evidency, evidencing <laughs> proportionate interest in and rights to receive payments under an energy conservation lease purchase agreement the series 2014 certificates. As described in the pre preliminary official statement referenced herein, the offering for sale of the series 2014 certificates shall be accomplished in consultation with the Vice President of Student Administrative Services, Gilmore and Bell PC, the, the Special Tax Council, Ransom Financial Consultants LLC, the Financial Advisor, and the Purchaser. The confirmation of the sale of the 2014 certificate shall be subject to the execution of a certificate purchase agreement between the purchaser and the college, the certificate purchase agreement, in a form approved by special tax council and the college's legal counsel. The adoption of the resolution by the governing body of the college authorizing the execution of the underlying supplemental lease purchase agreement and the execution of various documents necessary to deliver the series 2014 certificates. The chairman is hereby authorized to execute the certificate purchase agreement subject to the following pr parameters. A, a principal amount not to exceed $8.35 million, and B, a net interest cost, NIC, of not to exceed 3.75%. Section 2, the finance, financial advisor and purchaser in conjunction with the Special Tax Council and the Vice President of Student Administrative Services are hereby authorized to prepare, prepare a preliminary official statement, and the financial advisor purchaser and representative of the college are hereby authorized to use such document in connection with the sale of the series 2014 certificates. Section 3, for the purpose of, of enabling the purchaser to comply with the requirements of Rule 15C2-12 of the Security Exchange Commission, the rule, the college vice person and, and vice president of student administrative services or other appropriate officers of the college are hereby authorized, A, to approve the form of said preliminary official statement and to execute the certificate deeming preliminary official statement final in substantially the form attached hereto as Exhibit A as approved of the preliminary official statement, such official st signature thereon being conclusive evidence of such officials and the college's approval thereof. B, covenant to provide continuous secondary market disclosure by annually transmitting certain financial information and operating data and other information necessary to comply with the rule to the Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board and C, to take such actions to execute such other documents as such officers in their reasonable judgment deem necessary to enable the purchaser to comply with the requirements of the rule. Section 4. College agrees to provide to the purchaser within seven business days of the date of the sale of 2014 certificates or within sufficient time to accompany any confirmation that requests payment from any customer of the purchaser, whichever is earlier, sufficient copies of the final official statement to enable the purchasers to comply with the requirements of Rule 15C2-12, subparagraph 3, parentheses 3, excuse me, and parentheses 4 of the Security Exchange Commission and with the requirements of Rule G32 of the Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board. Section 5, the college chairperson, secretary, vice president of student administrative services, and the other officers and representatives of the college, the purchaser, the financial advisor, and special tax counsel are hereby authorized and directed to take such action as may be necessary to carry out the public sale of the 2014 certificates. 
Section 6, this resolution shall be in force and effect from and after its adoption. Well done. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did you do that, Doug? Yeah. All right. Did you do he, he can read and do numbers, too. Oh, wow. Good job. All right. We have a motion and a second. We have now been completely through the resolution. So we will call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you very, very much. Congratulations. We look forward to the progress. progress. Yes, we do. The progress or the process? Mm -hmm. Progress or the process. <laughs> uh, or perhaps yeah. both. Well, both. perhaps yeah, both. both. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's next? Wow. That was a lot. All right. Okay. Um, you want no. to just continue with payment of the bills? <laughs> That's correct. I ask for your approval yes, for the payment of the bills. As listed in your report. Move approval of payment of the bills. Second. Okay, we have motion and a second to pay the bills. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ask for your approval of the financial reports to begin on 137 of your report, page 137. So move. Finance committee reviewed, found no irregularities. Okay, I have a motion from Trustee Maddox. Second. And a second to approve. Right. The financial reports. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. And then way back on page two <laughs> of, <laughs> sorry, jumps around a little bit. On page two, I ask for your approval of the recommendations under 10C1 through 4. Finance Committee reviewed and recommend approval. So moved. Second. All right. Motion in a second to. Uh, Approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> all right. All the motions carried with respect to the much. finances. All right. <laughs> now I'll entertain a motion to accept uh, Vice President Bodie's report. So moved. Right all right. We have a motion and a second to accept Vice President Bodie's report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I think you're off the hot seat, Brian. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Right, we are now at uh, agenda item number 12, miscellaneous, which is indicating the uh, another executive session. And if somebody wants to make that motion and read that, why, we'll be good. Move that we uh, go to an executive session to discuss uh, personnel. Non elected. Non elected personnel matters. Uh, how much time uh, to protect the privacy interests of right, the individual? Yeah, it's a complete speech. sentence. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have that motion time. for how much time? Uh, I know how much time has a question. Uh, how much time? Probably 15 minutes. Okay. 15, 15 minutes. minutes. I'll try. 15 seconds. Minutes. We have motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We'll temporarily adjourn and we'll be back. Moved we could come back into session. Second. All right. We have motion session. Come back into open session. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Agenda item 13. Personnel approval. Hello. Mark. Approval of the personnel report. Second. Okay, we have a motion in the second uh, for approval uh, of the personnel. Do we have questions or comments? I just have one comment. Um, I don't, I don't see him in in the uh, audience, but I just like to express my appreciation to Jay Matlack for the work that he has done for the college and for the community, and I understand he's going to work in the community and look forward to more great things from him so just want to let him know and let the community know how much we appreciate his work here well yeah, and i did second it. that yeah uh, those are definitely about Good. my exact comments as well yep. mm -hmm. a great young man so okay are there other comments or questions all in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed all right the motion carries 
agenda item 14 is report of committees does anyone have a report to give I have a small report um, when I attended Coffeyville for the KACCT it was a very good workshop or whatever just you should know about financial oversight I probably need some additional copies to so that everybody would uh, but Don I, got Ash, ele- I got electronically so if you like I'll okay. forward it on okay to the rest of them hmm. that would be perfect then I don't have to do that all righty the second thing is that they had a um, they were really on the state part of the legislation and they had four or five things that they asked us to do one of them was um, support the Board of Regents on the funding for the Senate Bill 155. Full funding. Uh, full funding for Senate Bill 155. Um, and support uh, the request for the $8 million for post-secondary tier technical education. And then it was one other thing that they asked us to do, and that was to um, contact our legislators, have them on campus, talk to them, show them around, whether they were new or old. Um, I got an opportunity this evening, I'm going to attend the, the, the name of it is, uh, the Federal Reserve is gonna meet at uh, Hilton Gardens Inn for 66101 and 66104. So I requested uh, 200 packages of our technical, um, classes and I'm going to be able to talk to those two other parents tonight uh, we got to do better on our marketing they 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 talked about that for about 30 minutes that uh, we got to spread the word so that um, students will go into the technical education um, that the funding was at the same level but that still does not mean that we got more funding because we funded the same thing we funded for last year and everything has gone up. They got a lot of uh, litigations um, from the school districts. It's 85 counties and 73, I think, school districts that have filed a litigation suit against the state for funding for K through 12. And they talked about uh, performance a lot. And we had been talking about that and how you measure it and the budget cuts. So um, they say that it's up to to $5.2 billion in cuts from K through 12. And that's 67% of the funding for K through 12. So I think those were the highlights. I tried to make myself notes. I don't know what you said last month. Um, I said everything you didn't say. <laughs> good, <laughs> good, and then it's not a repeat. Um, I don't know if any of you all got in contact with your legislators, but you, you do need to talk to them and talk to them at length. Um, not only talk to your legislators, but we need to talk If you know somebody someplace else, you need to have them to talk, and you need to speak up as well. Um, We need to attend the Board of Regents meetings more. At least I was told I should be attending more. So uh, I am gonna try to do that. And um, I think that was all. Far as going to all on the state level, on the, on the national level, uh, I think Wendell and uh, and Ash and I are going to the to Washington D.C. February the 9th, and uh, on February the 11th, I have scheduled a meeting with all of our legislators. Uh, the afternoon we go into the Senate side, and that morning we go into the House side. This will be for the. So ACCT Tuesday, February the 11th, Summit. right, so I will give y'all both a schedule. I've talked to each one of their schedulers and already have it set up. Um, 
I think we need to talk to Lynn Jenkins from what I read the other day. So I will try to contact her tomorrow, although she's not, she don't have, well, she do have an AA, because Washburn gives out uh, associate's degrees. So she, he, she does have one school that gives out associate's degrees. Okay. Okay. All right, any other committee reports? Thank you, Marianne. Mm -hmm. Hearing none, then we'll move to uh, agenda item 15, unfinished business. Hearing none, we are there. Uh, move for adjournment. Second. second. Motion for adjournment and a second. <laughs> all in second favor? Aye. Right. Any opposed? Thank you all very much and have a pleasant evening. Be safe.